Welcome in to the Impact Sports Podcast. My name is Nick. Thank you for joining me uh, this afternoon. I look forward uh, to uh, jumping into a conversation here with you about some softball um, and also just getting to know you. Before we get started, I do want to give a quick shout out to two of our sponsors for these episodes that we have here. Um, first off, I want to give a shout out to uh, Soul Goals Podcast. You can find that information down below in the description. Um, incredible podcast, incredible stories, actually. I urge everybody to check it out. She's talked to some people that have overcame a lot of adversity in their life. Uh, great stories of resilience and hope, and uh, it, it's amazing. Soul Goals Podcast. Next up, for any softball fans, which I'm sure we'll have a few listening to this <laughs> later on, uh, check out Fast Pitch Films. They're in the California area. They do amazing work, um, videography stuff, for, photography stuff, documentaries, interviews, stuff like that. Check it out. That also link will be down below. That is Fast Pitch Films and Soul Goals Podcast. Well, now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and introduce yourself here, and then we'll jump right in. Hi, I'm Meredith Barnhart. I'm a 2025, and I just recently committed to the University of Tennessee. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I look forward to talking with you about some stuff, like we said. So I'm going to jump right in and talk to you about just kind of you and your relationship with the sport, you know, of softball. When did you kind of know that this was something you wanted to do for ser seriously? And when did you kind of know, like, man, I just love this sport? Mm-hmm. I think all growing up, I played a lot of sports. So whether that was um, basketball or I even played baseball with the boys when I was younger. Okay. Um, but then I got into softball a little bit later because they offered that for girls my age. And I think just um, like seeing the big girls play, like I got to go down to the IDT, which is hosted here in Colorado. And I just remember sitting in the stands watching them play. And I was like, that's what I want to do. Like mm, yeah. to inspire little girls like I was like, that's what makes me love the game. And just to, then I learned like growing up playing the sport is like, um, like these are my best friends. Like I get to play with them and like craft, um, get super good at my craft. Yeah. So I think I just, um, just all the little nitty gritty things about the sport has just like continued and continued to help me like love the game. Yeah. I think every year is different for sure. Like whether that's club or high school ball, which I'm in now, um, just every little nuance just makes me love the game more and more and more, I think. Awesome. I love that. I love that. And yeah, you're, you're right. There's, there's so many different things. Like you said, each, each year is different. Each season's yeah. different. Like you said, whether it is high school or club there. So thank you for sharing that. So now um, you talked about being committed to the university of Tennessee. Uh, mm -hmm. Take me through just that process. You know, what was the whole recruiting process like for you? Cause it, kind of the same way with what you just said, each recruiting story is different. Everybody's got a different journey for that. So just kind of take me through what that experience was like with you. So I think just recruiting in general is just crazy. Like, I feel <laughs> like it's so stressful for girls my age and younger, even just walking through this process. Yeah. Um, so I think for me, I just started off going to camps. That's what I was advised to. And so I started my journey with like heading out to GCU. Just my brother went there. So I was like, I'm just going to go to a camp. Yeah. I was a young eighth grader. Um, so I just started doing that and I learned like more and more going to camps was so huge for me. Like getting one-on-one -on -one time with the coaches was just like unmatched. Yeah. Like I just realized like that's what's super important to me is that relationship with the coaches. Um, so then as I started to like narrow down, like, okay, I don't want to play this far away from home or I want to play in warm weather rather than cold or things like that. I would pick schools, um, to go to camps. And mm -hmm. so I actually didn't attend the Tennessee camp until later, like um, like two weeks away from September 1. Okay. So I had um, – they came out and watched a lot during the summer, and we had my um, – like my um, team's like sports recruiter like talk to them a lot, um, come to watch games. And then when I got on campus, that was like – that was it. Like I just felt um, – I got to know the coaches really well, and I just love their coaching style – um, how they run things, how they relate with players. So that was really big. And then September 1 came, and that's a super stressful day. It's, like, amazing, yeah. all in one. Um, but I think finally getting to break the barrier of talking to coaches was amazing. Like, all mm -hmm. summer it's so weird because you can't you can't talk to them. They come yeah. watch you play. Yeah, you, like, you know they're there, but you can't yes. talk to them. Yeah, and I think that can add a lot of stress for girls, too, is, like, I, I'm nervous because they're here to watch, but – I think going to their camp takes away some of that because mm, yeah, yeah. they know who you are. So they can just really watch like, okay, this is how she responds to things. Um, so that was huge. And then September 1, 
um, just talking to them was just amazing. And then I got to go on a visit at Tennessee and that just felt, I feel like everyone says like, when you know, you know, but for me, it felt super homey. And then getting, I also went on a visit to Nebraska. So then getting to um, meet those coaches and have a phenomenal visit really secured like how I felt about Tennessee. Mm. I think all of that in a bundle, it's, um, it's a long process and you don't really know where you are when you're in it. But just trusting the process and trusting the Lord through it all um, was pretty a big thing for me. I love that. I love that. And thank you for sharing all of that because I think it's uh, – I love talking about those journeys because it is different. And like you said, it's so – and I love that you didn't shy away from using the word stressful, you know, because it is sometimes. Yeah. Like you said, especially when you can't talk to the coaches because like you said, you know that they're there, they're watching. Mm -hmm. Everybody usually knows when there's coaches in the audience and stuff like yeah. that. and. Everybody talks about it, but like you said, until that date, you really have nothing. You don't really know what's going through anybody's head, you know. So, mm -hmm. um, thank you for sharing that. So now I want to yeah. talk to you about the training aspect. What are you kind of doing? Mm -hmm. You know, whether that's through high school or club, what are you kind of doing? This is kind of personally too, not just with the team. But what are you kind of doing personally for training? Like, what does that look like for you in your life right now? So I think it's a little bit different, like currently, because I'm in high school ball and okay. we're about to enter postseason. Um. So I think just during that time, I really think along with all the physical training is like mental training. Mm, yeah, People yeah. don't really talk about that much. Um, but I think opportunities just like in practice or when you're in the cages and like failure happens, like that's when I start to like train my mind. Like don't, don't let myself slide that way or yeah. to help keep me like mentally focused so that when game time comes, like I'm ready, like I'm used to that feeling. So I think mentally I do a lot of that just even in practice, like high school ball. Um, and then physically um, I'm about to enter into off season and a little bit of fall ball. So I do a lot of like weight training. Okay. Um, and then I train like my hitting coaches, um, Nicole Tromboli. So we just work the ins and outs of the game of the hitting game, whether that's an outside pitch or inside pitch. Um, I think one-on-one -on -one time is super important for hitters. Yeah. Um, Cause I think it's, it's a, like a connection to the mind thing. Mm, yeah, like yeah, if yeah. I can like feel what's going on with my body, then that can help me succeed better. Um, so I work with Nicole a lot, just hitting wise. And then the weight room, that's, that's a big piece of all this. I think I saw a big jump um, from my sophomore summer to my junior summer or maybe freshman to sophomore summer, yeah. just being physically stronger and throwing the ball harder and being more agile. Um, so I, that's really important to me, just staying in the weight room, um, having a good coach walk you through those things um, mm -hmm. has been super big for my my journey. Yes, and all, all good things, like you said, and I, thank you for sharing that. And I think my next question actually goes into a little bit of what you said at the beginning of your answer, um, talking about, you know, you know, the adversity that comes, the ups and downs, some mistakes, failure, whatever you want to call it, because um, that's that's going to come for everybody, you know, eventually in an, an athletic season. Um, so how do you come when those things do come, you talked about getting mentally prepared and everything. So when those things do come, you know, when, if you have a bad game, a bad inning, a bad stretch, a slump, whatever it is, what are you kind of doing to kind of work yourself through that? I think there's two things. I kind of have a quick story that just happened to me recently that okay. was yeah. really, um, like big for me. I just saw it super evidently. Um, so I recently, we played discovery Canyon, uh, just a small school here in Colorado and um, we were down big bottom of the seventh and the previous inning it was crucial crucial situation runners on and I just had a horrible at bat like struck out just swinging at bad pitches all this stuff and then the seventh inning comes and we're down and the bases are loaded and I'm up and I think we were down by five and my previous at bat I'm just thinking like she totally got me horrible at bat. I just struck out like, Oh no, I'm stressed. Um, and then I, I remember thinking as I walked up to the play, I was like, like, I got this, like I can do this. Like my abilities, yeah. I can do this. And so I just kept saying over and over, I have my routine before I hit, I'm doing that. And I'm like literally saying it in my mind, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Um, and then we ended up, I hit a grand slam to like get yes. us right up there. It was awesome. Just the energy was cool. We didn't end up pulling away. Um, we couldn't, we couldn't take the game, but I just think in that moment, just it recently happened. I was like, there is so much power with our minds. Mm. 
like just if I were to walk up to the plate and like be nervous or like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to be an out, I'm going to let yeah. my team down, that can really affect your performance. Definitely. Um, so I think that, and then another thing that's huge for me is just knowing where my, like where my worth stands. Mm. Yes. Like it's, it's not about the game. Like I'm so blessed to have the abilities to play this game, but my worth is in the Lord and Jesus and what he's already accomplished so the ups and downs of the games will come and that's part of it. That's part of why I love it too. Um, but just knowing like who I am doesn't differ when I'm on or off the field. So just, I think part of it, you just got to let it slide. Like I'm going to yeah. have a bad game. I'm going to strike out. Um, but just staying confident, knowing where your confidence comes and why you really play the game, yeah. I think helps. I love that. Tremendous answer. And thank you for that. I, it, it deserves one of those. Uh, if I had those little, uh, Amen buttons there. I'll push yeah. that. There you <laughs> yeah. go. Uh, yeah. That's a great answer, though. And I think that's a, such a great thing to think about because obviously in the moment you want to do good and everybody wants mm -hmm. to succeed. And yeah. and obviously I think that's totally okay. But you do, like you said, you got to remember your why. Like, why are you playing this yeah. game? And and like you said, it's a game is all the way. Like, it's not just like you, a game isn't just three innings or four innings. Right. Or, it's a full game. And you, like you said, you, you had a terrible at bat. You got it out of your mind. You're like, okay, hey, I'm here for a reason. I got this. I can do yeah. this. And like you said there, so thank you for sharing that. So now let's talk about, you talked about being in school ball now, um, obviously got a little fall ball coming up mm -hmm. and what else are you looking forward to coming up uh, in the near future for you? I think really my fall ball team. So I made a switch for teams. Um, the last team was super successful. We ended um, runner up at PGF okay. and then things just kind of switched. And so I'm on a new team and just the girls that I get to play with, man, I am so excited, so pumped. Um, we got a great pitching staff, um, just all around great hitters. So I'm excited to uh, – I've played on the same team for a really long time. So I think just um, like getting to know new girls, the yeah. new culture, new coaches, um, I think that's like kind of a little thing. Like there's not a big – Yeah, um, yeah. That, that, but well, I'm just excited. That, yeah, I yeah. think that is a great thing there. It's, it's something new, you know, and it's obviously – you know, you want to get as much of this in before you get to your college level mm -hmm. there. Um, meet as much people. So I think that's a great thing there. I, I like that. So now yeah. let me ask you, I'm going to kind of step away from softball talk for a minute. Okay. Let's talk about you and give me, this can be, uh, I call them interesting facts, but this can be, it can be normal facts just about yourself. It can be something you love to do. It can be wacky mm -hmm. and crazy, whatever it may be. What are okay. three interesting facts about yourself? I think first one that comes to mind is huge Zach Bryan fan. Okay. Yeah. Know, he's on the rise. I love it. I just recently got to go to Nashville and see him play. Um, so love Zach Bryan, big country music person. Um, I think when I was thinking about this, I this is kind of an oddball, but I lived in yeah. Africa for a while. Okay, so cool. I think that has totally shaped who I am, and a lot of people don't really know that. Yeah. Um, but just amazing experience. Um, another thing. Man, I just – I don't really know. Um, other than I just think a big one, this isn't interesting, but more of just what I'm built on is yeah, yeah. the Lord. Like mm. you can probably tell that from just our conversation already, but more that that needs to be shared and yeah. just the peace and comfort that comes with everything. Um, so I guess that's interesting. That's a big part of who I am. But yeah, those three things that makes up a lot of, a lot of who I am. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And Hey, great facts there. And uh, obviously the, Last one that you shared there, um, the most important one, obviously, like you yeah. said there. And I think that's that is an interesting fact. I think we should need to call it that. Like that is a that's who mm -hmm. shaped you, what makes you who you are. Um, I always say it like this. Uh, I kind of have a little funny analogy about it. Um, I, I'm a big I we used my wife and I we used to live near the beach. And, you know, you go to the beach sometimes and you see like those airplanes that's carrying like the banner around, you know, it's yeah. got the promoting a restaurant yeah. or something that's happening. Yeah. Um, and I kind of say that that's how the Lord should be in our lives, you know, like that's mm -hmm. the banner of our lives. If that makes any sense at all, um, oh, but that's oh, kind of yeah. like flying around first. And then after that, then for you, it's like, Hey, that's what I am first. And I'm not a softball player first, you know, I'm this. Exactly. Um, and I, and I think that, you know, in our culture today, I think it gets switched around because we're so mm -hmm. performance driven, you know, I mean, I'm yes. sure you know that because I think it's okay to, you know, go after your sport and fully do what the Lord has given you and fully mm -hmm. do that. But mm -hmm. we can't let it be the only thing that defines who we are. Yeah. So I love I that you said that. I'm, I'm so glad you've shared all of that in this interview too, because I think it's so important. So thank you for kind of sharing a little bit about yourself. And I do appreciate your time thank today. You. Uh, looking yeah. forward to getting this out there. Um, good luck with school ball, as you said. 
I know you guys are uh, kind of rounding that to the end and then also fall ball. Um, so yes. thank you for your time. Have a rest of your day. And I appreciate you sharing the stuff you shared today. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much.